five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. From the city so nice they had to name it twice, New York, New York. <laughs> it's the Ramble, and I'm Alex Bennett, and we go till midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, there she is, an ex-wife. Her name is Ronnie Bennett, and she runs a blog called timegoesby.net, which you should go to right now. Don't even listen to it. Just go to that site. <laughs> right. Hello, Ronnie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? It's morning well, where I am uh, still. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is morning where you are, uh, which is in uh, Lake Oswego, which is near Portland. Oregon. Oregon. Not to be confused with Portland, Maine or other Portland. Where, which was the other place you lived. I mean, it's yes, like. Yes, I did. And you I were, moved from Portland to Portland. You were born in Portland, wound up in Portland, Maine, then went to Portland, Oregon. Are there any other Portlands you haven't gone to yet? I haven't ever visited. I, if I remember correctly, there are six or seven or eight Portlands in the United States, but those are the only two I've ever been to. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. So um, how is how is everything going with you? It's going just fine. Uh -huh. How about oh. yeah? How about yeah. Your, how about your health and everything like that? Yeah, I had to talk with the doctor last oh, week. Oh yes, you were going to go talk to the doctor. How did that turn out? Of uh, ambiguous. It, it just, just what they're surprised you're still alive or what? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I mean, it, which is kind of a surprise to me. As we said, I'm on golden time, but um, you know, it was discussion of when to do the next CT scan. Yeah, and uh, that's the one that they can tell what's been going on with the cancer. Yeah, and. Uh, you know, I've been kind of enjoying my free time for three months, so I decided to put it off for a month, just so I could have free mm -hmm. time <laughs> from yeah. having to think about that. Yeah. And uh, and you know, we discussed that if it's growing rapidly, what what can and can't be done. Yeah. And um, you know what? The whole purpose of putting it off was not to think about it. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, in other words, you got no definitive answers on any of this, you know. Well, they, they can't look at your face and tell, you know. Yeah, yeah, they should be able to. You should be looking gaunt and on your last leg, and you aren't. Well, you know, I keep saying if I didn't know I had cancer, I wouldn't know I have cancer. I, although, I got to tell you, I mean, I uh, don't. This doesn't even apply to you, but I had a friend a few years back, Steve Gruber, who died of a lung cancer. And the night before he died, you would have never thought he'd be dead the next day. You know, I mean, he was all piss and vinegar, and he wanted to get out of the hospital, and he didn't want to be there. And, uh, you know, and you're going, and then I get a call, he's dead. And I go to the hospital, there he is, lying in bed, dead. You know, and I'm going... How did that happen? You know, I was talking to him yesterday. So, you I know. I think that for, for, you know, the people who not, the ones not doing the dying at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you're right. That's really hard. I mean, what's the dividing line? What changed? He just didn't take a next breath. And, uh, you know, both of my parents, that yeah. I took care of my mother for several months before she died. Yeah. And visited with my dad. And. Um, they looked sick mm -hmm. at the end. And so, and I look at, you know, when you're a younger woman, you look at your face and you look in the mirror and you mm -hmm. put on your makeup and you wonder if you're pretty enough to go out in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, I look now and I say, I look in the mirror and I, do I look like I'm sick? Am I getting sick or does it show in my face? It's a, a different question. Well, I mean, even, e even your, uh, your breathing problem. Has seemed to have gotten better. You don't. Well, that's the, the. I can only sing the praises of the rehab nurses. Yeah. Um, they taught me how to do that and 
taught me that you have to exercise because otherwise the lungs are just going to collapse down. So, um, you know, I did, they're, they're the best. I had, I didn't have a whole lot of faith that that could do me any good, and it did miracles. It really made a difference. Well, I mean, so here you are. You're getting better every day. <laughs> you know, <I> just... <laughs> but like your friend, <laughs> we don't know about tomorrow morning. <laughs> you know, she, she, well, you know, I mean, on the other hand, I had a friend die recently, Jack Garfine, and he didn't look too good the day before. Okay, well, wasn't he a whole lot older than your other friend? Uh, who, Jack Garfine? Yeah. Garfheim was uh, 89. I don't know. I don't consider I have two friends who are in there who are both 94, so I don't consider that maybe so old anymore. Well, you know what's <laughs> interesting? You know, and you do things about age. Um, Jack has a, a friend, oddly enough, named Jack, and both of them are survivors of the concentration camps. Okay? That's how they're, they became friends in the concentration camp. Uh, you look at Jack, my Jack. And he just was, he was, he was, he was really falling apart. He looked old, he looked tired, he looked sick, you know, whatever. You look at the other Jack, who's approximately the same age, went through the same life experience, and he looks like he's 75. Well, know? that goes back to what I've been saying all this time I've been writing this damn blog, is that we age individually at entirely different rates. Your age doesn't have a whole lot to do with that. You know, one of the funny things about what we look at what age yeah. is the older I get, mm. the younger young people look. So I look at some of the, particularly the women, but some of the guys too, young people on uh, TV news like MSNBC and CNN and that are the ones that are out in the field following all the candidates around. Yeah. And I think those people aren't out of high school yet. They're so young looking. Right. <laughs> Right, and the older I get, the more that happens, and it just I used uh, to, I used to ref just don't look grown up enough to be doing that job. <laughs> I used to refer to it uh, as the teenage news uh, because these newscasters were getting younger and younger and, and younger, you know, and, and and it's not them, it's us, it's uh, our perception. We're growing older and older and older. And they keep looking younger and younger but, and younger. But, you know, there was a time when, uh, even when I was even when I was younger, in my 40s and 50s, when I got stopped by a 22-year-old cop for a ticket, and he gave me a lecture, I felt, <laughs> you know, I felt, well, screw you, you know? I mean, how dare you give me a lecture, You're, you, you punk, all right? Uh, but now... I'm going, how dare you tell me the news? <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, you know, if you go check Wikipedia on any of those people, they're like 28, 30, 34. I mean, they're grown-ups. They've been doing their job for a number of years. Yeah. They've got experience. Yeah. But they look like they're still in high school. Yeah. yeah. To me, I don't think they do to people so, their own age. So I started watching, uh, I think it was CNN in the mornings, and I just said, it, it looks like it's the teenage news. It, it just, you know, <laughs> and I, I was in my seven, 60s, maybe late 60s when I said that. So, you know, <coughs> whatever. So, uh, but, you know, I mean, I, you know, these young punks, what the hell. Uh, but they can, they can also, I, I don't know if at my age I would want to slog around in the wintry snows of New Hampshire, you know. You know, it's not that it's being on the road forever. We, uh, the, the, the primary season is so bloody long. And shouldn't be that you just you hardly ever get to go home, and you're and you're always running for a bus or an airplane or where's the hotel? What did I leave in the hotel? I mean, when I never had to travel at that rate of constant on the move, and be producing something in between, um, and I I don't think I, I just think that's so exhausting. You've got to be young to do it. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, you know the guy. I, you know this guy is on NBC and does the uh, uh, all all the reporting from war zones. Oh, uh, Engel, Richard it, Engel. He's a wonderful Engel. reporter. Yeah, yeah, he's a wonderful reporter. Although we're sitting around waiting for the day we hear he got killed. I mean, he goes into these just. Who does that? No, you don't, no, no. I've no, never no, had well, that thought in my life. Well, he's about in him. he's in such dangerous situations. 
Yeah. You go, yeah. how, you know, how did, is he yeah. going to survive this? I mean, we had, we had one newscaster, who was it, uh, over at ABC, who, who got really shot up really badly, or roadside bomb or whatever, and pretty much is out of the uh, broadcast business now, remember? Uh, no. He was the anchor of these ABC Evening News. And he got blown up by a roadside bomb. I, you know, the last time I saw the evening news of any network must have been 20 years ago. Yeah. I've never tuned it yeah. in since. Yeah. But, uh, but I mean, by the time they do it, the news is over and on to something else. But so I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a news reporter. Send me, to, send me to New Hampshire. Don't send me to Syria. Okay? Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. I, I, reporters have been going to war for as long as there have been wars. You know something? There are people like Richard Engel who that they I think there's a certain love for it, you know, a, a certain love of the danger and also of getting the story on, in spite of all things. You know what I'm saying? No, I mean, I mean, yes, I mean, but that that's yeah. the thing is that I I, I I'm sorry, I don't I'm I'm trying to figure out why you're kind of surprised. It's always been that way, at least. To World War One and probably in the Civil War, and who knows before the well, Revo you know, during in those the cases we were talking War. about world wars which were so predominant that they were almost at our shores. Uh, I mean, you, have, you had reporters during World War Two. Uh, kids, you're not going to remember this at all. Ernie Pyle, as an example, who was a war mm -hmm. correspondent, very famous for it and being in the in the midst of it all and writing about it, writing about the GIs in in very poetic terms um but these things you know you you really just uh, you go wow you know th how that richard engel survives all these things i mean there are bombs going off I, all you know around i'm so him. surprised you're surprised if i were a young woman and now that women can do those things because they didn't used to be back in those days when we were young women weren't allowed they weren't hired for jobs like that but now there are plenty of women reporting from war zones and if I were young and a reporter, I would want to be there in today's world. I would want to be in the Middle East. Okay, that and and that all well and good. But also, there's another aspect to Richard Engel. He's married, and I think he has a newly born a, a new child. He may have a second one there. I don't know. But when you suddenly have a family, do you want to put yourself in this kind of danger? You know, and I I, I think that you're falling victim to the, oh, my God, we must be safe. Do, can we get out all of right, bed, check right. the floor? Let's put it in a, in a more, uh, um, something may hit home better. Let's say you were married to Richard Engel, okay? How would that you doesn't mean I wouldn't worry, but it wouldn't. I, if that's what he does, more power to him. He's, he's, he's doing a terrific wow. job. I depend oh, I on Engel. Oh, I listen, I think he's, I think, I think he's one of the few good reporters we have right now. You know, well, let's not go there. That's just too boring. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it's too boring. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Everybody's a critic. Yeah, you've never done that kind of work. You don't know. Yeah, I guess, I guess. Uh, you know, I mean, I mean, I've gone, I've gone to the snows of New Hampshire and the the snows of Iowa during an election year, and uh, uh, it's it's it's, fa it's fascinating. But I don't have to do it every week. You know. And these guys are out there day in, day out. And there are the other reporters who aren't even reporting uh, the uh, uh, the election. They're reporting. There's one guy over at NBC who's always always somewhere. I mean, he's reporting something in Tibet. The next day he's reporting something in Omaha. You know, and I'm going, these guys don't get off an airplane. You know. But that's what they do. That's what, the, that's what they do. And But how long can you do that? Could you do that at 50? Could you Many do that do. at 60? Yes. Could you do it at 70? I couldn't do it at, at my age. At my age, you can barely get me out of the damn house. But nobody asks you to or that, or anyone else. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I guess I missed the point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't understand the point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, 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 but it, you, uh, you said you had a couple of things you wanted to talk about. I want to ask you about something. Okay. I wrote a blog post yesterday mm -hmm. on something that just really annoys me and has annoyed me for years is the phrase successful aging. And my first response, 
it's been around for 15 or 20 years and this in the last few years been gaining momentum i went to amazon to see how many books were titled um successful aging mm -hmm. and i stopped counting at 24. It, there were more but i just got bored with counting. yeah yeah um and uh and my my first response is always as as opposed to what um, I mean, unsuccessful aging, and what what could that possibly yeah, be? What is and successful aging? These books, yeah. yeah. What they're mostly telling you is to eat your vegetables and get your exercise, and do all the things they tell us old people to do. And I can get that information from many, probably hundreds of reliable sources. There's more than that and enough of that information. So they're saying to successfully age, you have to see your doctor, eat good food, mm -hmm. walk around a little bit, you know, all the stuff they tell us. And I don't get it. I just, it makes no sense to me. I think some people age and, and, they, and they have all kinds. Of, you know, I don't think that if you... Uh, if you go by some of these people who say, well, you know, eat your vegetables and work out three times a week and do, do, do a brisk walk once a day or something like that, that that's going to keep you from getting anything. No, 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 no. That's not the question. The question. We're not talking about getting sick. We're talking about successful aging. And what in the world does anybody think it means? Well, you know, you know, I'll take, let me give you let me give you an example of something similar that always used to tick me off. And that was when people uh, on television would say, and how old are you? And the person would go, I'm 85. And the whole audience would applaud. Well, you know, what did they, what did they have to do to get about, to 85? I'm going to stick to successful aging because we're not, you're not doing this right. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, you, hey, that's, um, that's, the, that's the producer it, in her, by the way. That's the producer. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. You're the that's the producer in you. That's not what we're talking about. We have to get back to the subject matter. Uh, Alan, but I'm not allowed here. to talk in your ear. You know, <laughs> let me talk in your ear. Uh, <laughs> um, it, it, it is it's it's ubiquitous in the community of aging, mm -hmm. successful aging. Well, you know what could that mean? Um, if you're sick. Well, I'm sick. Am I a failed? A if I'm, am I failing aging? Um, or what if you're homeless? Uh, you know that all of these books, all these articles, tell you to do all these things to be a successful, to be successful at aging, but they're all about if you're talking about being sick or, well, being sick you have almost no control over, but if something it's like homeless or something. Um, the time to fix that was many years ago. There's not much you can do it if you're old and homeless. Um, and I'm not so sure it's always your fault. Yeah. Um, and so the idea of successful aging presupposes there's something unsuccessful aging or failed aging, mm -hmm. which I don't think is possible. Well, you know, I mean, what you're talking about, too, is I think it, it's a term... Uh, that's a marketable term. Oh, here's a book on successful aging. You know. you know, that doesn't excuse it. No, it doesn't excuse it, but I'm saying... They... I'm saying that it becomes a catchphrase, and it's meaningless, and it tells people that you're doing something wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't think there's anything you can... Anything you can do wrong to age unsuccessfully. Yeah. Um, isn't it, isn't it just the luck of the draw, you know? No, no, no. Now, when you say that, now then you're thinking that sick people just got the bad end of the straw. I'm not talking, of, I don't think being sick makes you a failure at aging. Okay. But I mean, what we're doing is we're, what, what, you're, what, you, what you, what you want to do is you want to define successful aging and maybe there shouldn't be any such term. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, there just shouldn't be any such. It just term. keeps ballooning everywhere I turn. There, are online articles, magazine articles, newspapers, and more books. A new one just came out. 
Well, you, you know why eight. you see those books and why you see those uh, articles is because we're probably getting an older population that's larger. And so it's a marketable, at least in books and in uh, in writings and things like that, it's a m very marketable term uh, because most people go, oh, my God, I'm aging. I'm 80 years old. What do I do? Oh, here, hey, here's a book on successful aging. I'll read that. Do you think most people do that? Oh, yeah. I think people, you know, they are, number one, most people are, are deadly afraid of getting older. Uh, uh, and they begin to see that things that once used to go up are going down. All right? <laughs> And uh, uh, it, it can start to panic you after a while. Um, once I reached 80, I suddenly realized that all the aches and pains I have, and I go, why do I have this, is because I'm 80 years old. Right. And, and, and thank God for that, because how many people do I know didn't make it to 80? You know, I, every week I, you, you hear about it too. You hear about people you know who died, all right? Uh, and... and um, so you have to take it on, on that. And I, I just go, what's successful aging? I guess that's it. you can keep breathing, you know? I mean, but it takes no talent. It takes no ability. And there's no book but, that can that tell you how to do it. that isn't even my question. I don't, it, it's that, I don't know where it originated. I, I've seen it growing, mm -hmm. used more meaning, used more frequently yeah. over the last 15 years or so. And it... It is so empty, and it is. All, but what it also does is, if you're not inclined to think it through like I am, because I have to try to make sense of it on writing, you know, so yeah. I have put a different kind of thought to it than when I'm just skimming a story. Um, it it implies quite strongly that you're doing something wrong yeah, about getting yeah, old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, so and then their solution is eat your vegetables. That's right. Right, successful. Um, uh, how about unsuccessful? If, if it were about health, and that yeah. doesn't seem to be the point either. And I don't know that there's anything you can do wrong about aging. Well, there's nothing you're going to do that's going to also stop the effects of it. Sometimes you uh, don't uh, like uh, my my wife. Okay, she, she works out if she can three times a week for about three hours a day. I mean, she does an hour on the bike. She does speed cycling, all of that, right? Mm. The, the, she is an absolute adrenaline junkie, all right? She's got more things wrong with her <laughs> than I've got wrong with me. you can't connect them. You can't say they're wrong because she rides a bicycle for an hour. No, I'm not saying that uh, causes it. I'm saying well, that... that, that, did, that no, what I'm there. saying is that didn't help it, okay? You don't know that. All right, so, um, um, okay, we've established that Ronnie hates the term successful aging. I guess that's what we've determined. I'm sorry, say what again? I, I didn't, that Ronnie, I, Ronnie does not like the term successful aging. Oh, well, yes, yeah, yeah, okay. but I just, I think it's so crazy that it just keeps growing when, and even if I take it as being a marketing phrase that just marketers made something up that sounded good and doesn't have any meaning, which is true of a lot of marketing phrases. Yeah. Um, even if I take that as part of it or a strong part of it, why would you put a marketing phrase out there that makes people feel bad about themselves? Me, the whole point of okay. selling stuff is to make people feel good about let, themselves. Let, let me ask you this. If tomorrow we decided that Ronnie Bennett was going to start a podcast... Okay. Oh no, she's not. <laughs> no, no, but but she she was going to start a podcast, and it was simply called Successful Aging. Mm, not me. Wait a minute. Can't get me on that show. Oh, oh wait a minute. I'm just. This is a suppose. Now go along with me on my suppose. Suppose you did all those things. Do you think you get more people listening to you than read your blog? I think you would. Maybe. I, I think don't know, you would. But I'm not. I can't do that because I don't know. I can't talk about it. There's nothing to say. It's empty. I know. There's a whole box. You label it successful aging, and you open up the box, and there's nothing in it. Yeah, but you're not you're not into marketing yourself and and making money off that marketing. You get what I'm saying? You're an ethical person. You don't need phrases like successful aging to try and tell people. You just it, time goes by. Dot net. It says everything about it, but it's it's not going to attract somebody who's sitting there going. 
boy, I'm having more aches and pains lately, and I hate this getting old. Oh, wait a minute. Here's a site called Successful Aging. No, I, well, but that's really interesting. So you go immediately from I hurt, I'm sick, to, oh, Successful Aging will help me. Yeah. How? I don't know, but I'm saying that if it if they're saying this term a lot, it's got to be a marketable term, okay? Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know who's labeling the magazine articles or who's writing yeah, but, the headlines. But, but, but you get what I'm saying. I mean, it's a marketing but, thing. It's absolutely a marketing thing. Well, it's just stupid. Yeah. And since I've got so much invested in aging in general well, after uh, all these years. <laughs> and you paid the price for it, too. You've, you've gotten all the life experience you want to know about aging. <laughs> you know? And you're I, not, Repeat that. I think you, I was... You, you've gotten all the, all the information you need about aging from just your life experience right now with getting sick and this and that and breathing and so on. Uh, and, uh, you know, so, um, uh, you've aged successfully. You realize that? <laughs> I may what? You've aged successfully. Well, I don't even know what that means. I've just aged. <laughs> okay. My favorite was a reader who left this comment. Her name was Susan. She used just an R for her last name, just mm -hmm. an initial. She said, as long as, um, as long as you're above ground and breathing, you're aging successfully. Well, that's, that's, but, and I yeah. think that's all it needs to be. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's no penalty or there's no way to fail aging. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's just, and, and that's what I dislike about, I wasn't real clear in what I wrote yesterday. Um, it's what I object to so strongly <clears throat> is that you put the idea by using that phrase, you put the idea in people's head that they're maybe they're unsuccessful at it. Well, what you're doing is you're saying by successful aging, you're implying <clears throat> that there is a alternative which is unsuccessful aging. But you're not saying that. But I know it's I know it I I know it's pissing you off. You know, a lot of things piss you off. But I know <laughs> <laughs> I know that not one. So much in I, my old I, age. I, I know what it's all about, and you have every right to be uh, irritated by it. And I agree with you. You know, <laughs> I just would like it, please, to disappear. I it's just you know, place. as I say, I go, I go back to those times that they they have somebody and they go, "How old are you?" And they go, "I'm I'm 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 85." And everybody applauds. And I go, you know, I don't know that that deserves applause i mean oh let me tell you something else you know you At just least, had i, I agree with you too yeah. Like, yeah. Well, i don't think i don't think it's as important as successful aging problem um i'm kidding you about that but the other one that bothers me have you noticed president trump does it but long before he came along all kinds of people who stand on stages do whatever they do on stages it happens to them they say something and the audience applauds, and they applaud. What, what are they applauding? I hate they, people. I, 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 now you've talked about something which gripes me, and that's people who, when they get up on stage and people applaud them, also applaud. That's well, what I just yeah, said. Yeah, I, that just absolutely drives me nuts. Why? You're applauding your, they're applauding you, and you're applauding yourself? It, it makes no sense. I know, yeah. and that's new. It didn't always, wasn't always that way in my life. And also, as a producer, a person who produced TV shows, it had to drive you crazy when people did that because they were also doing it on their mic that was on their chest. Nobody ever did that when I was producing television shows. <laughs> Not one single. In those days, nobody did that. Were you a successful producer? Well, no, it's not about that. It's that what is that something in the culture changed that yeah. we applaud ourselves? Do you think it's connected to selfies? It's the same idea. Oh, that yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Maybe that's where it well, comes. Maybe from. that's where it comes from. But it 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 also is that people just just applaud for the weirdest, strangest things. You're 85, so they applaud. Actually, they should say, "Boy, are you lucky." You know, you when know? I lived in New York, 40 odd years worth. Yeah, yeah. Every Broadway show I ever went to, every single one, no matter how awful it was, they got a standing ovation at the end. Do you know something? Every, You're absolutely... Every, every, and I decided then 
that the reason was is that everybody wanted to go home and tell their friends that the show was so good they got a standing ovation. Oh, when you're paying $150 for the seat, you're going to believe anything about that <laughs> show. You know, I you think don't, that's you, low you, these you, you don't want to have buyer's remorse. You know, that's, that's why I hate uh, <laughs> reviewers of, like, Broadway shows and movies because they get in for free. And they don't have to pay the $150 to see that Broadway show. If they did, they might be a little more critical of it. You know? Well, but I mean, but all those people who did pay that much stood up yeah. at the end. Yeah. But anyway, you're absolutely right. They all stand up and applaud. I, I'm wondering if they're applauding just the fact that people got up and performed a show. <laughs> and, <laughs> the fact it, that they walked and memorized their lines. Well, that they, they got up and they performed a show. You know, they, the show may have been a bad show, but they gave it their best. And so they want to, you know, give them well, that. Well, applauding is, used to be perfectly good, you know. But now everyone has to, they stand up forever and ever and applaud. Oh, boy. Well, hey, listen, we've... we've... This is what it means. When you get old, you start realizing that all of these, th you know, I should have called myself crabby old lady today. Um, All these things, yeah. You keep finding these things that drive you crazy when you get old. Apparently, we have too much time on our hands, well, I think. Yeah. Well, I, uh, you know, I could, we could go into all the health stuff and all, all that and the things within that whole society that kind of get to you. But we'll do that another time. Thank you so much. I love these little discussions we have with each other and talking with the crabby old lady. <laughs> Yes, Ladies and gentlemen, that, she's a crabby old lady. that's Ronnie Bennett, no relation any longer, which she is thankful for. And uh, we, uh, uh, she can be found at uh, 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 timegoesby.net. Can I say one thing about that? Sure. What you just said? Mm -hmm. Do you know that you're the only person alive who's known me this long? Well, then I guess I have a... And that somehow means something to me. Yeah. No, you mean, well, actually, let me think about it. Hold on a second. Yes, I think you are, too, to me. You mean for you, too? Yeah, yeah. I met you when I was 17. And I met you when I was about, what, 18, uh, 19, 20, something like that. 18, 19, 20, somewhere yeah. in there. Yeah, well, one, one, anyway. Uh, I can't think of anybody else because the people I did know all have died. You know, like I had a friend, Roy Trumbull, in high school. Mm -hmm. He died. Uh, that would be maybe the oldest guy if he were still a person, if he were still alive. What about um, John? I don't remember his last name, who lived in Boston. Bayless? John Bayless, I think so. I don't know if he's still alive or not, but I, I you know, it's like, I, if, if he is alive, I haven't talked to him since high school. Okay, so I haven't known him since high school. Okay. No, because he came to visit us when we were married. Oh, okay. But I, you know, I, I, I have, I'm talking to you right now, and we go back that far. So, and, I, and you know, since my mother died, mm -hmm. I think nobody's known me longer. Mm. God, that's it. Well, you know, it, it's a testament to the fact that we're still talking to each other. We were married, and we're still <laughs> talking to each other. Yeah. We weren't for. A I while. don't know why that's important, but it is. I think it's important. It's you know it's important to me. Uh, sometimes my wife says to me, "Oh, you're talking to that old girlfriend again?" And I went, "Yeah, I stay friends with people I may have had a relationship with, but that doesn't mean I don't stay friends. It's just that my needs and their needs went in different directions, you know. And and I take great pride in the fact that there are quite a few girlfriends and and ex wives." <laughs> that I still talk to. I think it's uh, I think it's a testament to me because I have engendered such a decent relationship with them while we were together, and I I think it's a testament to them that they they're still stupid enough to keep talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> We've gone way over, huh? Oh God, have we gone way? Well, screw it. You know, uh, I, otherwise I got to go talk to people and. Um, Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I have to go back to writing. <laughs> yeah. So I'll uh, I'll talk to you in a couple of weeks, and uh, you know, and then I'll be able to grouse to you about if if in a couple of weeks I'm ready to do any of this kind of thing. But I should be. They they remember that I was told the I uh, read on my went to my the site that my doctor has, uh, and he I looked up the you know the prostate seed 
thing, brachytherapy, they call it, and uh, uh, brachytherapy. Isn't that a cute name? Brachytherapy. <laughs> Uh, uh, where they put the seeds in, and at the very end, and and I, uh, I I'm quoting it off the top of my mind. It says, "And the next day, most people can go back to doing what they normally do, whether it's going to work or playing golf." Uh, did he say that? Yeah, it says playing golf, and I'm going. I I think I played golf once in my life. What does this mean? That it, once you put the seeds in me, I'm going to have this overwhelming desire to go desire out and play to go golf. Play golf. <laughs> I have to ask you a question. Mm. Over your right shoulder, why do you have Coca-Cola bottles? Oh, because they all have uh, names. I, I bought them from Coke. Uh, they have Bolo on there, which was my nickname. And one says Alex, and one says Marjorie, and one says OK Mills, which is her nickname. Why do, you, why do they have your names on them? Because you could buy them that way. Oh, you, you, you I, could, I don't drink you, Coke, so I didn't Coca -Cola know. Coca-Cola had a promotion... Remember when they started putting, they put different things on bottles like uh, for a good friend or whatever. And they came up with this campaign and you could literally pay them to put I, names on Coca-Cola bottles. So that's that's what I did. And there they are or over in the corner she's talking about there. So anyway. Okay, get lost. <laughs> All right. Uh, See you next time. That's Ronnie Bennett. Time goes by dot net. Bye, Ronnie. Bye. Five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. Okay, that's Ronnie, and uh, we, we, we went over with her, but we don't mind going over with her. We like talking to her on a, on a regular basis. Okay, all righty. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, by the way, uh, you know where before I told you I bought a light for in here? Well, I went crazy. Uh, watch this. First, I'll turn this off. Okay, I'll turn one off. Okay. See? And I turn that one off, this one off, and then I get that. But if I turn them all back on, because I got two of them now, and one of them's a big, big one, uh, I think, look, isn't that wonderful? And then the background's kind of darker, and it's, it's nice. It's good. And I think the picture probably looks better. Uh, than it normally looks, too. Well, it's time to talk to people. If they want to call, if they don't want to call, I can go to sleep early, you know? It's, it's, it's always the rule, but they always uh, keep me awake, so I guess uh, it's time to go to uh, the uh, the the uh, Skype lines. As soon as, and i got to say this, as soon as I can get it working here right and getting everything going, Okay, let me see here. Let me turn it on so they can all see that I've got it on. Okay, everybody should start seeing a green thing, and that means that you can then call me if you want to. If you don't want to, I, I don't give a crap. You know, I'll just, uh, I'll just uh, continue uh, doing, uh, just talking like I want to talk. Or turning my lights on and off, which I can also do. Okay. All right. Here comes uh, Todd Moore. Oh, Todd's calling early. T -t -t Todd. Uh, Todd usually calls us from his. Uh, uh, wait, 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 Todd. Uh, Todd, you, uh, Todd, you got to turn off your, and you got to turn on your camera. There we. Wait, 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 wait a minute, Todd. 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 Are you there? Okay, Todd. Good. Okay. All right. And then I got to answer. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, there's. A, okay. Now I got to start putting people in the uh, in the uh, thing here so that we can we can put us see in our them. Places. You put 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 you in your place. Uh, let me see here. Uh, first of all, first of all, there's uh, there goes. Uh, let's see here. Well, so, uh, since uh, Todd called first, we'll put him in on the, on the top, and uh, then uh, since uh, uh, Phil called second, we'll put him in the second place. Uh, let me see here, scuba diver. There we go. Okay, boom. Okay, and then I do my little transition, and there they are already. Hi, Todd. How you doing? I'm doing all right. How you doing, my man? Okay, he's in his truck. Um, 
apparently you're not driving, hopefully. Uh, uh, no, not now. But guess what I did, man? Because I was so dark last time you couldn't see me, I got a lamp. <laughs> Well, uh, because so now, uh, hopefully you can see me better. Well, so because that was the reasons why I don't be, call too much because you couldn't really yeah. see me. Well, the, the last time you saw me on the program, I was too dark. That's why I went out and bought lamps. Okay? No, you so, look fine. There my we brother. go. You see? Stop. That. Yeah, and of course there's Phil Meyer, ladies and gentlemen. I'm always dark. I, I have something. Stop, I have no. I have something for Phil, by the way. Dark side. I, I went out and I bought. I have a. I have this one lamp. It's called Key Light, and the same company makes a bigger light. And uh, I, I wanted to pay cash for it, and I could only pay cash for it at one store here in New York. And it was, um, it's a bigger one over here, which is really nice. If I if I use this other machine, I just I look glorious. But it makes the resolution better too because he doesn't have to suck stuff out. But if you want to know where I bought it from, Phil <laughs> You went to the Jews. Yeah, I went to the went to Hasids. There we went. Well I could have gone to B B and H, you know. Let's see. Other Jews. Now I can throw this away. Yeah. I don't Need it, Adorama. You know that that building has got like seven floors of stuff. I guess it does. Uh, I mine mine was right on the first floor. Uh, well, a lot of stuff is, but yeah. uh, they have. Uh, I think on their third floor they have underwater camera stuff, and uh, it's a big yeah, building. They they do carry a lot of underwater stuff. They in fact they 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 have a kind of it's not like an advertisement, but a name for the an extra name for the store. That en engenders that, like uh, I don't know, sports. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've bought stuff from them. I, I can't remember the name. But, yeah, but yeah. anyway, it's the first time I've ever bought anything from them. But uh, they they had what I, they had what I wanted. Although I would have liked them to gotten one of the other key lights. And now that I've got this big huge light over here, I'm thinking of replacing it with another they, one. Of uh, these. It, it, on the first floor, that's where they have the video cameras, also. Mm -hmm. That right hand corner. Did you see some of those uh, Canon three chip cameras and stuff like oh, that? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I I passed by them, but I didn't want to take time looking at them because it, it's so bothersome to me. Since last month, I had a nineteen thousand dollar bill from my lawyer. And, <laughs> yeah, you got to stay away. from Well, that. actually, I can afford to buy the cameras. I'm th I'm thinking of buying like a two thousand dollar camera, but. I'm, yeah. I'm waiting for a vacation that I'm going to take where I need it because the rest of the time I got my I got my phone which is great for that and uh, my uh, uh, you know the phone is terrific for it and I've also got uh, uh, what do you call it the GoPro uh, you know yeah. and the quality is really terrific but you know the uh, by the way the I may have to get up and go to the bathroom for some reason the radiation the effects yeah. of the radiation has uh, has affected me. The last couple of days, where it didn't last week when I ended it, and so I have all these little side effects, like having to pee a lot, and I, I actually pooped my pants today. You know? Wow! Yeah. Oh, good. No, thanks. Well, cool. it's one of those things where you think you're going to fart and you don't. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? A shark. I do that all the time. No, you do that all the way. Yeah, but with I your not, with your not. line of work, that must get yeah, very I, uncomfortable. Hey. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, now, do you ever uh, did you do you have like a porta potty in in the truck the same way they do in small boats? You know, it's sort of a a, a place where you can do what you got to do, and it's uh, like a marine toilet. But yeah, we got those, but um, a lot of truck drivers do not have those. I do. Yeah. Um, it's very crazy with the other drivers that don't have those. Yeah. Yeah. But you, 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 you see, see truck stop or mm -hmm. yeah. you see running out and they're older and their bladders are not the same and everything like that. And it's not a pretty sight. Yeah. It's yeah. not a pretty sight. Uh, hey, I also meant to ask you that light, since you're in a truck, is that like a twelve volt light or is it uh for you know, runs off battery or uh um Everything in my truck, pretty much, that I'm running, um, I sit my phone on top of my laptop computer, and the left of me is my TV or my uh, big, huge tablet oh, I have here. Inverter. Yeah, big, huge one. I can run your house refrigerator off of it. Wow. Really? I've done it before. Well, when you get a chance, drive by, and I'll let you use my house refrigerator. 
Yeah. Give, it a, it. give it a give it just it. doesn't make ice. I'm big on ice. Okay. But anyway, so I, anyway, you know, I'm, I'm uh, uh, um, so I got my, I got, I'm, I got a lot of lights in here, and I don't have to use as many lights in the room. So you notice the background is a little dark. So, yeah. I, so I have a little definition here. So it's, I think. It well, I had to turn my lights down because uh, since I converted to Catalina, and uh, my uh, uh, Logitech uh, camera, the software doesn't work anymore. That's why I never went to Catalina. Yeah, and, uh, and I'm not talking uh, about going to the island. I'm talking about the the uh, latest a Mac, uh, pro yeah. a, a Mac uh, program. The fact is, what I did is I installed it on one of my other machines, and it's a machine that I have to like. Uh, when the show's through, I dump my program over there, and that's where the uh, where the um, uh, uh, what do you call it? the uh, encoder is to go yeah. out to the internet. And it wouldn't show up. I couldn't. I did everything I could to make it show up, and it wouldn't show up. I even went online and posted things. Nobody knew what to do. I mean, it just wasn't ready for prime time. And since I never put it in in the first place, I'm not going to take a chance now. Yeah, well, uh, that's the only thing I, th well, uh, any of the things to do with the camera. I also had a second uh, a party program, or mm -hmm. third party program, that, uh, uh, worked with the uh, Logitech camera and the Mac, that doesn't work either. Mm -hmm. So I can't adjust the brightness. Uh, it's fairly dark in here, but it, you couldn't tell that from uh, the, the brightness in the camera. Well, you know what pisses me off a little bit about about Apple, uh, among other things, um, is, is that Apple, um, uh, if, if they're such a good company, why is it that after they put out a new operating system, which you would think they had tested and tested and tested and tested and tested. They do for their stuff. Yeah, but tested. And then all of a sudden, things like the network, which should work, doesn't work. Right. Okay. Or if it does work, I don't know how to make it work. Or maybe it doesn't work with this machine because this machine doesn't have Catalina in it. And if you think I'm going to put Catalina in this machine, which I'm doing the shows with every night, and take the chance that I'm not going to be able to do a show for you know a month or so, so what I do is I I make sure that I always have it back have a backup, and then if if I if I like I installed Catalina on that machine it didn't work I had a backup I went and reinstalled the old one and I was good to go, but wow. that and the other thing about Apple is do you ever notice that every time they have an update to their whatever to their operating system uh or something like uh oh, oh, oh i don't know safari or whatever it takes forever to to uh to to load it in to you know with windows i find that it's very fast yeah that's because they have a windows update every day sometimes twice a day well the thing is about but apple with their updates updates they take you, you go okay all right update okay we'll require a a, 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 a restart okay re, i'll do that and then they go restart and then it says it'll be 30 minutes 40 minutes 50 minutes before this thing is loaded and you're going come on i got things to do with my life i know well, and, and, and this is me. apple the great wonderful uh, apple yeah <laughs> well i uh I had a nice time. I went to Delancey Street for Valentine's Day. Oh. Uh, and uh, I, I had the show on the phone and uh, tapped in a couple of times. Yeah. But, um, uh, you know, Delancey That's Street. Really, you're, really, you're really a romantic at heart, aren't you, Phil? I mean, you take your girlfriend, because she's not your wife yet, you take your girlfriend out to Valentine's Day dinner, and what do you do? You listen to this program. That's really romantic. I, I just had it on the side. You know, the, the thing is... Um, just like the Caesar dressing, yeah, right. A dedicated listener. Yeah. But the uh, uh, Delancey Street Foundation is mm -hmm. run by um, mm -hmm. uh, convicts that, are, that have been let out of prison. And, uh, and I, I, can, I can say this. They had the greatest service they were so nice and you know these guys i mean they were tatted up and uh you know they, they weren't they didn't have you know kill kill 
Uh, well, to begin with, it they don't they don't run it and they didn't start it. It was started by this woman who who uh, left somebody. Right? It's it's a it's it's a, and she created kind of a charity thing in which right. her whole idea was she would open up these restaurants and she would get ex convicts to man them and she pays them well. It's not like she's using them as slave labor or anything like that. Hi, Patrick, is using them as slave labor, uh, but she uh, uh, she's very much into. Uh, uh, into rehabilitating them and feeling that by giving them a job and giving them some kind of responsibility will allow them to do that rather than just throw them out into the rest of the world and have them have to steal for a living. You know. Yeah. Uh, well, they years ago in San Francisco they had a restaurant on Union Street and they had uh, a mansion up in Pacific Heights where they all yes uh, would, yes and uh, they sold that. And they bought a place on the Embarcadero mm -hmm. uh, uh, near the uh, the ballpark. Mm -hmm. And they have a big apartment building where the, uh, the guys who are participating in the foundation live. Mm -hmm. And the restaurant is uh, right there by Bryant and uh, yeah. on the Embarcadero. Very nice. Uh, and, and, and the I one place you could get a, a reservation. Get a reservation <laughs> the night before because I couldn't find another place. You know, it was in and out burger. How was the food? How was the food? Uh, the food was good. You yeah. know, I had a, I had a steak. Uh, Faye had the salmon, mm -hmm. and uh, it, the food was good. I had a couple of glasses of wine. I was feeling no pain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it, it was okay. Mm. Uh, I was glad to find the place. Well, that's good. I, that's good. It's going to be a bum. <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, how you doing, Patrick? Tip top. Tip top. He's always tip top, ladies and gentlemen. I've never, ever asked him that question and had him say, I feel like crap. You know. What do you feel like crap about? Well, I know, I know. Well, I've got a little bit. I think my uh, my um, um, hernia is bothering me a little bit, or I'm imagining it's bothering me because I I I want to get this thing taken care of next week before my hernia goes on me. <laughs> you know, I I have a feeling I am now in a period of my life where I'm like a bad tire that you keep patching up. You know, and I have a heat patch on all parts of my body. I take a prostate, that'll take care of your hernia, you know. You didn't start falling apart until recently. You know, I started, the eyesight went in the 40s. In the 50s, something else went. In the 60s, more stuff went. Mm -hmm. it, it's like, uh, you know, every decade, I start falling apart a little bit more. Well, well just wait till you get my age. Uh, I'll be so lucky if, if you reach it. Yeah, if you reach it, you know. Uh, yeah, but at my age, it's a, you just go. You, somebody, my, I think it was Ronnie referred to as once as an organ recital. <laughs> you, you say everything that's wrong with you, and it's an organ yeah. recital. Yeah. So uh, anyway, hey, did yeah. you do for Valentine's? Uh, you didn't. You didn't. Nothing. Stiffer. Nothing. 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 Now you, you say, "Well, how unromantic are you, Alex?" No, I'm not unromantic at all. I'm. I'm. Uh, we talked about this the other day. I'm very logical about it. The fact is that it's the one night of the year that if you go to any restaurant, they're going to charge you double what they would the night before, or the night afterward. So yeah. why not have that nice romantic dinner some other time? You know, why play that game? Well, Faye likes a card. And if I don't get her a card, I'm, I'm in the doghouse. But we're at the restaurant, and she says, no flowers? And, I, and so I used your excuse. I said, well, the roses will be cheaper tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she, but she doesn't want to hear that. No, well, but, no, that's not the answer, Phil. She's Asian. Uh, it, it sounded good to her. You know, Asians are usually very... Uh, no, what you do is you say, he, you use the same excuse you used for why it took you, why you had to wind up eating with convicts, okay? And and, <laughs> and, and that is that, uh, sorry, Faye, but I tried to buy roses, but they were all out. Yeah. Okay? That's a good one. Mm -hmm. And you I, then she could I, say to you, but, and, and she can't use the excuse like, well, why didn't you buy them earlier? Because you say, because they would die by the time I got them to you. That's right. That's right. And quite frankly, why should I give you something that dies when I want to give you something that lives me? Yeah, well, they you have know, something roses th on the table. Oh, come on, Patrick. Don't vomit. With the roses. I'm just coming up with cheap excuses. Yeah. What? Yeah. I, I pointed to the roses on the table. I said, there they are. <laughs> well, there's only, in most, a lot of restaurants, if somebody comes to your table, would you like to buy a rose? 
That would have been okay. Well, rose for the lady? Oh, how much? $85. Yeah. yeah. And then you say no and you look like a jerk. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, you say yes and you are a jerk. <laughs> so anyway, I, by the way, with YouTube, I've been getting tired every night of, of having to uh, uh, ask them to review the show. Because once they review it, in most cases, they allow it to be monetized. They probably never look. By the way, so far, ready? I've made $2.31. Wow. You know, at this rate, at this rate. Are you going to share it with uh, Jack and uh, the, the other, uh, fuck. and Damien? Oh, excuse me. No. <laughs> I just said fuck. I didn't say the f complete word. <laughs> Although if you say it later on in the show, they don't get to it, <laughs> you know. So, uh, but anyway, um, no. But uh, uh, so, uh, but I was just I'm getting tired of it. I put up two shows, both the same shows. One of them passes, the other one doesn't. And you go, what's going on here? You know, there's something very arbitrary about all of this. What are you saying? Uh, did you, you were going like this? Uh, could you hear me? Cause I can't hear you guys you that well. You can't hear. I did a little while ago. I having trouble hearing. Where where what? are you where are you listening to us from? What are you listening to us on? My phone that I always listen to. Oh, oh okay, but you can't and you can't hear. Turn the speaker up on the phone a little bit. I did. Oh, you did. <laughs> I did that. Oh, okay. Well, no. apparently you're hearing the sound. Why don't do you have earphones you can put on the phone? No, I heard you guys fine, but then all of a sudden earlier. You guys kind of went really low. So wow. I don't know what happened. Well, I don't know. We're, we're sending everything out the way it should be going out here. So everybody right, else can cool. hear me okay, right? You can hear me, right, yeah. Phil? You yeah. can hear me. I can well, see you guys, Ron. Yeah. 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 So uh, anyway, so that, you know, so uh, the, yeah, yeah, I just, I consider, uh, uh, you know, Valentine's Day this. It's, it's like all these holidays creep up on you all the time first it's 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 christmas and then it's new year's and then it's valentine's day and then it's this and then it's that and you got to buy something for this and for that you know and why is it we guys are the ones who always have to buy a gift or take somebody out to dinner well she was going to take me but uh, i i you know put the card down you know? oh okay yes <laughs> I got an answer for that. Yeah, because we're suckers. Oh yeah, that's why. Oh, easily, why. Todd. No question about it. I mean, we're the ones that are supposed to be the bread providers, and this, that, and the third. So logically, we're the suckers first. The, the, yeah, it's part of the uh, other movement that's going on, the not me movement. <laughs> you know? Not me too. <laughs> <laughs> the not me movement. No, I'm not paying for it. You know. Uh, how how did he mistreat you? He didn't buy me dinner on Valentine's Day. Oh God, you know me too. Uh, did, you 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 have somebody in your life, right, Todd? Say it again. You have somebody in your life, Todd? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, uh, for Valentine's Day, I had a pretty good one. Um, I got out of the truck for a little bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> Spent a little time with, you know, my daughter. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? My yeah. baby Jasmine. You know, uh -huh. that was cool. Yeah. And I chilled with her bombs, and we was all chilling. And yeah. it was cold, but, you know, that's where I got the lamp from. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it was it was, it was was a good time finally getting out of the truck for just, you know, a couple of days. I had to go back to work, you know, real soon. But my job, I don't know what's going on with my company. They're... They're making a lot of mistakes. Um, they're just giving me a hard way to go. When you and, talk, when you talk about your company, what are you referring to exactly? Well, um, I'm a contractor. Okay. Um, so I pull loads uh, from another company, mm -hmm. um, and uh, the company I pull loads for are giving me a hard way to go. That's the best way to put it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. A route. The, the route is hard. Say what? The route is hard. No, not the route. Um, the jobs, uh, the lack of jobs, uh, the fuel card, um, calling in to try to find out what's going on, and they'll hang up on you and don't pick up the phone, or they don't yeah. want to talk at all. 
things like that that's going on right now. There's a lot of changes that happen from um, uh, the new year. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a new CEO in here now. And he's doing a great job, but he tried to do too much too fast. And um, a lot of the other drivers ain't hanging around for it. Yeah. A lot of them left. I heard, I heard this advertisement on uh, the radio, and uh, Walmart was looking for drivers. And they said they paid $0.85 cents, uh, a mile. And that they also paid while you had to sleep. I guess there's a dot uh, dot uh, rest time that you have to take, and uh, they said they also paid for that and certain other things. Is that a good deal for uh, for trucking? Or, and I think they provide everything. They just want a drivers. Yeah, well, but, but he's got a truck. He's got a truck for hire here. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little different than uh, driving for Walmart. Um, Walmart are company drivers. Uh, they get um, uh, 401ks. They get uh, certain other things like that. Um, they don't. Uh, I, 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 really, I really couldn't say exactly how they. I mean, I drive. I drive for them a lot of the times. My company, uh, we get uh, called pop up fleets, and yeah. they pay real good. But I, I, I try to stay away from Walmart because. No disrespect, I kind of look at Walmart as like Nazi Germany. So I kind of like leave them be. Mm -hmm. I worked for them a while back, and they're yeah. they're not nice people. Uh, if if you have a problem or whatever, they'll say, "Well, you'll never work for me again." And da 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 da. da. And I'd be like, "Wow, oh my god, for real? I will work for you again. I worked for you ten times before you said that, and each time you said that." <laughs> so it's like, you know, take it easy, dude. You know, I don't know. Yeah. Now, you know how they're saying that uh, they're going to have uh, robots driving the 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 trucks in a in in a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. uh, is that uh, is that impacting uh, you or your vision for the future? Or? Yeah, it's pretty much starting right now. Um, there's already trucks out here right now. <laughs> That um, um, uh, robots are, uh, or they're computer controlled trucks. Uh -huh. um, they'll have like somebody sitting behind the wheel. He'll be uh, playing on a cell phone and the truck's driving itself. Yeah. Um, and then we, you know, you have a lot of different things going on, but um, there's been a problem with a couple of the trucks running over people and, 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 and <laughs> you know, doing a lot of things that. Is making a lot of people turn away from it. Walmart's not one of them. Walmart, Amazon, a few other ones are really looking forward to the future, just like they do with their stores. You know, like in the stores, you have the self checkout. Mm -hmm. Well, they're doing the same thing with, you know, that's what you would want to do. It's cheaper to do it. There's that one way. advantage to getting run over. But there's one advantage to getting run over by a robot truck, that if you tell anybody the story, they'll go cool. <laughs> well, if you live through it, yes. But most of the people that got ran over didn't live through it. No, no. And the yeah. families didn't either. No, no. Well, they were, they were. didn't they have some self-driving Ubers or something that were going on for a while? They yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. One uh, ran over, I think there was one, or I think it was a Tesla vehicle. The first one ran over a girl or something like that on a bicycle or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there was somebody that ran out from between a, two parked cars, and 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 they got hit. Oh, uh, it's a different one. Okay, that's more. Okay, I think they got to get. The, I got to. I think they got to get those bugs worked out. Otherwise, these companies are going to go out of business just from the lawsuits. You know. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, if you've seen the self driving cars running around, and I've seen the Google test cars. Mm -hmm. uh, they, I saw one on Highway 13. And they had these weird uh, uh, gyro things on their roof. I guess they're uh, like radar, and uh, they sense uh, the stuff that's out there. But they had a whole bunch of stuff on the on the roof. Uh, yeah, it was not cool looking. Yeah, not sporty. Yeah, I'm trying to get my sound up. Sorry. Yeah, just, it's, uh, it, it probably it might just be your volume. You know. Yeah, that's I don't because it was fine a minute ago. What? Wow. Yeah. Uh, if bang on it, it'll fix it. 
<laughs> Do you want to hang? I'm gonna try to um, hit a button, and if I uh, hang up, I'll call right back. Okay, fine, good. Okay, hit a button. Watch him hit a button. He's yeah. hit, he's hitting the button. Has he hit the button yet? Well, Alex, so you didn't go out for Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. uh, you did go to Adorama. Mm -hmm. How many LEDs are in that light? I don't know. Huh? I don't know because it, the light is covered with a uh, an opaque kind of thing. Oh, a filter. Well, it's not a filter. It's it's just white. Uh, and uh, all like the lights are under it, and I don't know how many it has in there, to be honest yeah. with you. Uh, it all came with one of those plexiglass things <laughs> that come with uh, a white and a clear. No, and, I don't need uh, that. Like I, don't, I don't need that because uh, I can change the color uh, huh. on, the, on the light. Well, watch. Let's see if I can do it here. That's you see expensive. that? You see that? Yeah. And yeah. now I get more orangey. Yeah. Right, that's orangey. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so I uh, I can change the uh, the light the go from bright white to orange, or and yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yellow in between things like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, pretty neat. Hey, Tony, how you doing? Pretty good. Yeah, my mom's doing okay. It, I, I didn't ask about your mom. Oh, sorry. Because if we right. we uh, you know I mean we always pray for your mom's health. I, I appreciate it, too. <laughs> Not because we love your mom, but because we don't want you sleeping on our couch. <laughs> That's true. I, I come with baggage. Here's my clothes. <laughs> what? Here's my clothes. Here's, so drop a light. Here's my clothes. Yeah. What's on the manure tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I once slept on Alex's couch for almost a week, and you know what? It was comfortable. You How'd you throw them? How'd, Alex, how'd you get rid of them? Hmm? Slido during the slide. How'd I get I, rid uh, of him? I, uh, I, I didn't. You know. They, nice of you. They, they, let yeah. the, uh, they let us back into our yeah. uh, respective houses. Can, I got evacuated. Can you hear us better, Todd? Yeah, I can hear you guys better now. Okay. I don't know what's going on with my phone. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's all, you know. What kind of phone it's is tight. it? Is it an iPhone or a Samsung or a... It's a Galaxy uh, Note 9. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I don't know anything about those, so I couldn't tell you how to fix them. So. Uh, Alex, has that got a rotary dial? What? Are you got smart ass <laughs> stuff to say? Uh, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't go dissing his phone for crying well, out loud. Right. I'll deal with him later, Alex. I'll yes. get him later. He knows I'll get him later. <laughs> You're going to show up at your store? I'm going to get some water. Oh, okay. Yeah, you go get some water. Yeah, get a drink. And while he's gone, I can say the word. Trump. Huh? No, not Trump. Bloomberg. Yeah, he's raging in the polls. Did you see that Trump let out Carrot from jail? I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I can't believe me. that was one. Like, oh, my God. You know, he didn't let... No. Carrot's been out of jail, Tony. I thought he let him out. No, well, no, no. no. That was Blag Blagojevich was the one that got out of jail. Oh, he's back now. Don't don't say those oh, words. I know he's part of the hoods. Yeah, what? Everybody he owes money to. Money. <laughs> yeah, everybody he owes money to. Money to favors. Remember when I let you go on that list? Mm, All right. Yeah, yeah. Pardon you. you owe me a favor one day. I may ask for <laughs> I mean, that favor it's back. like he is Brando in The Godfather. Yeah, no, no, he's back. not Brando in The Godfather. No? Nah, he's... he's uh, He's um um what's his name uh um what what, what was what was his, the, the uh, weak brother the, Fre Fredo, Fredo. Fredo he's the Fredo <laughs> Trump is Fredo You don't hey, come to think like that Don't ever take sides against What what did you say Oh oh he, oh we said the magic word and all of a sudden he comes to Here life. we go Philly's pardoning people like this He pardoned De Bartolo, who was the oh, only yeah. team, uh, 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 part of the guy that deflated the football or something, or well, you know, I mean, who knows? Uh, he uh, uh, he let Bogoyevich go, who was a Democrat. Yeah, remember what he was in jail for, don't you? What is he selling doing? Obama's Senate seat? <laughs> selling Obama's <laughs> Senate seat. You could yes. sell a Senate seat. Yeah. Well, he, oh, you could. That's no, I, got, I got to tell you, you I interviewed Blagojevich uh, back uh, when I was at Sirius XM. 
good hair. I like the guy. Oh, really? he, was a, he was a good interview. He was a, he was a cool guy. Really cool guy. Tried to sell me a senatorship, but, you know, I didn't want to How buy. You, he actually got paid for his seat? No, he didn't. If he would have, then he wouldn't have gone to jail. Right. He must have Obama with a passion to tell the scene. No, he offered the, the he said, I got, if I got a deal for you, is I think what he said to somebody. Can you imagine this, please? Yeah. Chicago uh, or Illinois. No, but, but uh, no, Bernard Carrick's been out of jail for quite a while he, now. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I heard yeah. he pardoned him. I was confused. Yeah, well, no, you no. When you pardon somebody, what you're doing is you're what? you're 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 basically erasing their crime. So it's like he never got arrested. Well, it, you're you're in other words, for instance, Bernard Carrick, because he went to jail for I think his sentence was what five years. I think he spent two of them or something like that. Okay. Uh, in addition to having to go to prison, you lose your right to vote. So if the president pardons you, you get all those rights and privileges back. Okay. I thought they were giving people that were in prison the right to vote, or, or if you got out of prison. There's been that, uh, that suggestion, and I think it's still sitting around Congress somewhere uh, with some senator masturbating to it. I don't know. But. That means that Trump is getting uh, more vote, one vote at a time. From uh, from prisoners, <laughs> yes. votes from Mexicans and uh... yeah yeah yeah. Uh, well, uh, the thing is that that um, um, Blagojevich was still in prison, so that that was a guy who's getting out of prison because of it. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow, I think. yeah, I think, and on, on the day after tomorrow, he's going to become a Republican. Um, yeah. And uh, everybody else was somebody that Trump owed money to. So you know, I mean, it's all uh, it all comes Arnold, out in the wash. What? Uh, paid a million dollar fine, and he was on probation for two years. Uh, so he never actually went uh, to prison. Was De Bartolo pardoned in all of this? I didn't hear his name come up. Yeah. And uh, Rice and a bunch of other Forty ers were at the White House today, uh, along with De Bartolo and his family. Oh my God, boy, can they be bought off? Yeah. Uh, God. Oh well. Too bad. Anyway, but I mean, uh, and then K Carrick, you know, what a fucking crook. You know, just a, and you know what? What Looks they like didn't mention in any of the news items, and I thought they would, but then again, the news people today aren't that good. Uh, who was Bernard Carrick's uh, business partner? Rudy. Yeah, it was Giuliani partners with Ju Rudy Giuliani <laughs> and, and, and Bernard Carrick. Come on, it's a it's a good it's a favor. You know he's, it. Yeah. He's employing it's the favor, Phil. Be huh? honest. You and I got our It's his support. it's his version of Delancey Street. <laughs> <laughs> and the service is true. Good. Come on, and the service is it. good. Yeah. So obvious. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so why are you here serving us dinner? Well, I was pardoned by Trump. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, uh -huh. Carrick special. Yeah, but I mean Carrick. I mean, what a what a crook. And he looks like a crook. No, he is. Boy. I know somebody. Who, I, know so, I know somebody who dated him for several years and said, "Is he?" I said, uh, "Were he and Giuliani crooks?" And she says, "You you have no idea." Now she's a Fox commentator now, right? No. No. Uh, I think. Nope. No. No. Nope. Okay. Does she look kind of uh, Fox? One, uh, the uh, the uh, who do you call it? The, what's the company? Uh, 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 News Corp people. Uh, Mur Murdoch wants nothing to do with her. Oh, 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 really? Okay. Oh, because of that whole OJ thing. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't own Fox. Though. I'm not. We're not, I'm not saying who the woman is, but look it up. You know. But I mean, I I said to her, I said, were they were they the Dirty, <laughs> and she says you have no idea what was going oh, on there. So you know, I can only imagine yeah. the stories they can probably tell. Yeah, oh my God. yeah. So I mean, it, this, this, you know, and then the whole Roger Stone thing, all of that. I mean, it, it, at least if you're going to play it like that, if you're going to eventually take care of Roger Stone because he watched out for you, do it at a time when nobody's paying attention. Yeah, you know. But sure. he did it in such a way that it became a major. Pe a bone of contention. I mean, how dare he do that to Roger Stone, you know? And so just on. said his sentence didn't fit the crime. Well, yeah, but... Uh, uh, well, I kind of think it did, but, you know, that's... Uh...
Yeah. Let's see. Who is this? I have. I think this is. Uh, oh, oh, it's uh, it's uh, it's Jeff. Hold on a second while I right. find a space here for Jeff. We could make room for you, Jeff. I just didn't recognize the uh, the number because it's so long. I can't even say it here. It says CIDCBA eight nine four eight zero A eight B three. Well, you you know what I'm saying, okay? Well, that's his okay. regular number. Huh? Uh, there we go. There's Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Where are you? Are you still down in Miami? I am uh, right, right down the street to, to Miami. Yeah. Right down the street in Miami. Okay. Um, Todd, beach. Todd's here, and uh, Patrick's here, and uh, our our good friend uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Rob Blagojevich is here. Uh, no, Tony is here, and uh, uh, also here is uh, is Phil Meyer. So. That's our uh, that's our group for tonight, folks. Yeah. Ta-da! Um, so anyway, um, no. What I was going to say is that that uh, uh, it, it, I think he he chose the wrong time to stand up for Roger Stone at this moment. He should have just let uh, our uh, Justice Department do what they were going to do with Roger uh, for uh, Stone for the time being. And then later on, you know, if it's later on in the year or maybe he doesn't get reelected and the term's almost over or whatever, then that's the time to do it. All right. But he picked a bad time because now everybody wants uh, uh, our uh, attorney general's head on a spike. You know? and, and of course, he tried to make it sound like, well, I, I'm, I know how to, uh, I, 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 the, Trump is making it difficult for me to do my job, and I think that was all set up to kind of like, you know, pay no attention to the guy behind the curtain. Kind of. That's thing. how McCabe got off. Uh huh. Andy McCabe, uh, they they let him go, uh, probably in reaction to Trump uh, interfering with uh, uh, Roger Stone. Yeah. Uh, McCabe, they uh, were talking about criminal prosecution, and they said, "No, oh, we're not going to prosecute." And uh, something like four members of the Justice Department quit. The attorneys quit over this whole thing because they said they they didn't they didn't think that do you know Roger that, Stone uh, should be given special you know because there was no, nothing wrong there was nothing wrong with the Roger with the Roger Stone it's Roger right that's his first name but yeah Roger Stone's uh, sentence because it was within guidelines uh, it's all also. Uh, uh, sentences he, that are predetermined by law. He wasn't sentenced. It was just a recommendation by the DOJ. No, no, no. But what he was sentenced to. I mean, Trump says no, how he he hasn't been, he hasn't been, he hasn't been sentenced yet. No, it was a recommendation by the Department of Justice. Oh, I see. Okay. That that's and so the what uh, Barr did was he said he thought the recommendation was too high. And that it should have been less, but that it, it he it'll be up to the judge as to whether or not uh, what the term is. Yeah, it was recommendation. Patrick. Well, it's sure not going to be up to Bar anymore because he's going to quit. So. I don't think so. Yeah, he just it, it's been all over the news the last hour or so that he is considering quitting over Trump tweet. And let me tell you something, and you know this very well, Phil. If Trump get wind of that, Trump will fire him regardless. And Trump. then, right? So I mean, he's already signing his own death warrant as far as getting well, fired. Well, here's what it says on Drudge: Barr warns, "I'll walk if Trump if you keep tweeting." Really? That, yeah. That's what? the guarantee that he's walking, because there's no way in fuck that he's gonna stop tweeting. For anything. Well, he just wants him to stop tweeting about DOJ, the attorneys, the judges, and the cases that he's working on. He has well, that's all, that's all that that's all that he has control over, and that's all that affects him. Okay, so obviously those would be the things he would be. And and he and you know, there's no reason why Trump can't tweet about other stuff. It's just, and I agree with Barr. I think that Trump shouldn't tweet about those things. Well, it, it, it certainly taints cases. Yes, uh, uh, Patrick? And do you think Trump is going to allow some minion below him to dictate what he should or shouldn't do or even suggest that? We'll see. By the way... Uh, I hope he does. 
it, it won't. Barry's going to be gone by tomorrow, if not by the by the time we're done with this show, mm-hmm. because it it's over with for Barr. And then, what I love about Trump, and that being sarcastic, is Barr is going to be the worst motherfucker in the world, and he was the worst uh, uh, attorney general, uh, worse than Jeff Sessions. Uh, he's a traitor. He's a this. He's a that. You know, I mean, it. it I'd be disappointed. If that's the way it goes down. What do you think about this, Todd? Well, um, oh boy, <laughs> um, I don't think he's gonna go anywhere. Um, if he does, that'd be a surprise. Um, that's that's uh, Trump's buddy. Um, they both work hand in hand. Two thick as thieves. So I don't really see him going anywhere. Yeah. If he does, that'd be good. But I, I don't know. Yeah. I really don't know. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll see what happens. By the way, we have really low amount of people watching us tonight. Like really low, and I don't know what happened. Did we lose a signal for a while or something? Is that because of Tony's uh, background? Oh, oh, that's what it is. They just—it's so hideous. They have to turn off their TV set. I. <laughs> I didn't stop to think about that. We should talk to Tony about that when he comes back, that he loses this audience because of that. Let me see here. Ray Renati has just joined us. Let me add him to the... Uh, let me see here. Uh, beep, 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 uh, Darth Pat. No, not Whip Head. Not, nah. Goomba 61. There we are. Okay. Now he's... He should be there. Oh, I got to put him up here. There we go, and transition him. There we go. Hi, hi there, uh, Ray. How are you this evening? Good. How are you? What do you think about all these uh, these pardons that have been issued today? Uh, well, I it kind of made me a little sick. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you get a pardon, Ray? I did. The the Renati crime family was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I I don't get is that this it could be like a new Oprah show. You get a pardon, and you get a pardon, and you get a pardon. I mean, the one that made me. I, I think Milken is Milken out of jail already. Oh, he, oh no, he he hasn't been in jail for years. Yeah. It, what just bothers me about that is that guy ripped off a bunch of really old people for, of their pensions and stuff. He gave a lot of that money away. He was a big philanthropist. He became a big th- philanthropist after, after the fact. He was, he was even before. No, the, the, well, he was well, killing, he was given away. It's kind of like Robin Hood. So hmm. you're saying that what I just said is wrong? What, Milken? Uh, I, no, I believe that he was a philanthropist before he got caught. Mm-hmm. Okay, but well, didn't he rip off a sh- ton of people of their pension well, money? came up with these junk bonds and they were people were greedy and they invested in these things and they were uh, they weren't good investments and uh, but he I, set it up to make it look like a good thing to do to people who were ignorant possibly I'm not I'm not 100% I sure remember. <laughs> yeah. I remember I remember following and then there was a guy he worked with who died who was that he did cancer uh he, the other guy actually was the. Was the uh, uh, yeah, I re- read the name today. What was it? Started with a B, I think. Yeah, I don't. Re- I didn't read. I just remember there was another guy, and they were both in on it, and they were purposely ripping off old people. And yeah. I sorry. I just. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll look up what. And this what, guy what, let out of jail. What's his name? That scumbag who sold Obama's seat. Well, that was Rob Blagojevich. I, I was mentioning earlier that I, I actually interviewed Rob when he was on the show, when he, was, he came to do my show at uh, Sirius XM, and I actually liked the guy. You know, he was, he was, he was a lot of, he was, he, was, he was a good interview. I'll tell yeah. you, every criminal I have ever known has been the nicest person. Oh, but wait a minute. I got to tell you, there have been several guys who have gone to jail uh, who I've had on my show. I guess it's a, it's a trend. <laughs> Uh, but they were all Republicans too. That was the trend as well. Who was the guy from Texas? What was his name? Oh, what's his, uh, uh, what was his what name? What was his name again? I remember you said it. Yeah, uh, uh, he wound up on Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, yeah. the he, he was actually one of the best guests I ever had on. Very charming, you know. Jamie. Was he a good dancer? 
Uh, no, he got it. He was. I think he got off the show at the, on the first uh, go round or something. But I'm trying to remember who that what what his name was. And uh, I, it. I'll tell you what it reminded me of is uh, Alfred Hitchcock years ago when they asked him why all the all the bad guys in his movies were so good looking. His answer was, well, if anybody was as ugly as you think they should be to be a bad guy in a movie, they couldn't get within ten feet of their victim. So, you know, of course, charming, nice people are going to commit the biggest crimes. They, they, that's how they commit their crimes. You that know? is true. Look at Ted Bundy. I was watching a documentary on him. They didn't even know. Like, he was a decent-looking guy. Well, and and he, he, he could schmooze his way out of certain situations, too. I mean, that was amazing. I couldn't yeah. believe that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, yeah. So, you know, how, how we, yes, yes, Todd. Yeah. You know, I couldn't get away with Jack. <laughs> not because my color, just the way I look. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm not no Ted Bundy. I couldn't get away with nothing. Well, I'm I'm, I'm certainly glad that uh, you weren't here for Stop and Frisk. Anyway. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, I was. Still against the wall. Oh, you were. You, you were talking about the other night. You were here for Stop and Frisk. Yeah, I was in town. I yeah. wasn't living back in New York, but I got stopped a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Up against the wall. Well, here's where Bloomberg is making his... Here's where Bloomberg is explaining himself badly, okay? What he should be saying is, well, the reason I targeted those people is because I was targeting people who were the most subject to commit crimes, which are people in high poverty areas and people who were poor, and that they would be more likely. And that's the re I mean, Harlem was, let's be honest, an absolutely, at that time, dreadful neighborhood. You, you, want to be there. you, you know, I wouldn't have moved in here at that time. Uh, and I know people that didn't want to move here, and not only did they not want to move here, if they did live here, wanted to get out of it, you know, because it was that dangerous. You know, it was the New Jack City uh, of uh, 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 version of Harlem. Uh, so he, he just could excuse a lot of that in a way by saying, I did what I thought was best to protect those neighborhoods, and perhaps I was wrong in the way I did it, and that if it terrorized anybody as a result, I, am, I humbly apologize for it. And while they still won't let him off with that, it'll, it'll ease it a little bit. But ex right. it explain, it, little bit. explain crime as a poverty thing and not as a race thing. Do, would you agree with that, Todd? Um, I really don't know. I really can't answer that, uh, that up. Yeah. But he has a lot more, uh, uh, skeletons in the closet right now. Especially that other one with, um, uh, what is it? Um, something that happened with court or something like that with some person that, uh, that was black or something. I don't know. Exactly look, look, they're going to, they're going to find everything they possibly can get on, on, uh, on, on Bloomberg. But the fact is, I think he's going to be able to finesse his way out of all of it. And I'm going to tell you why. And I know Phil's got his hand up because he's dying to say something here. But the fact is, I think Bloomberg is the guy that Trump is most afraid of. And he's afraid of him because Bloomberg could spend $5 billion on this race and it wouldn't even, even make his ass itch, you know? I mean... Uh, it, it's pocket lint to him. To Trump, it's everything. Trump can't five five million dollars to battle him. He can throw him a tip right on the, on the podium. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> buy yourself lunch. It's on me. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, let, let let Phil first. Phil's had his hand up for a while. Yes, Phil. Interesting. Uh, have you seen the videos that they've been playing from 2010, 11, 16, and 18 of uh, Bloomberg? Uh, making uh, racist remarks and uh, yeah, and and a number of other things. They got this guy dead to right on tapes. You see, what he portrays himself as during his ads is not who he is. And once he starts becoming a, a, a you know a little bit higher in the polls, like he is. All of this stuff is coming out, and it's not only going to come. The other people who want his Phil, money Phil, aren't going to say Phil, anything. But he's, Phil, uh, Phil, I'm going to tell you how he's going to battle this. I'm going to tell you. I tell you. I'm going to tell you how he's going to fight it. Okay, plain and simple. All right. Okay, ready? It's called five million dollars. 
Okay, that's how he's going to fight you, Phil. Billion. Well, yeah, uh, five, five billion, excuse me. Five billion dollars. Oh, all of that stuff that he said on tape mm -hmm. is free. And he also just insulted the farmers uh, today or yesterday. I mean, you know, uh, it's he's, he's never, see, uh, this guy has more gaffes than Joe than Biden does. Oh, I'll tell you, I'll you tell know, you, you can talk about gaffes or anything you want to. I'm I, once again, I'm saying five billion dollars will buy him the election. I don't think so. Oh, now, this I is think the so. interesting thing. He's got he's got Bernie Sanders now and AOC Bree. on his butt. Yeah, well, yeah. Bernie Sanders is going to be the worst thing ever happened to the Democratic Party. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I want. Well, wait, wait a minute, you disagree with me, Todd? Want... Yeah, I disagree with you. You go on attacking my man Bernie, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, wait a minute, I forgot. Bernie's got a gang. And... <laughs> I'm not a Bernie bro, okay? but I'm saying, man, compared to Bloomberg with money, so we're gonna go with a Trump. Versus a Trump, that's one is a Democrat, one's a Republican with money. No, you can't tell which one they are. They're driven by the. Yeah, but you know, I got I got to tell you I got to tell you right. You know, Bloomberg has been accused by his employees of uh, running a very uh, uh, uncomfortable. Uh, work environment. Well, that work that the work environment they're complaining about is a few years back when all companies had that same kind of work environment. Wait a minute, let me finish, Phil. Let me finish, Phil. They all had that kind of work environment, and because of the Me Too movement and other such things, they have changed their way of operating. And you cannot go to. I've had. I've known women who work for Bloomberg who said it was an absolute wonderful place to work. Okay. Absolutely wonderful place to work. Now, we're talking about Bloomberg Broadcasting is where I knew people that were there. But they said they never had a better job. They were paid better than they had ever gotten paid anywhere. That the medical benefits and things like that were the best of any job they ever had. Um, and, uh, 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 you know, I've never heard a bad word about it from anybody. People were literally knocking down doors to try and go to work for Bloomberg. So he paid them well before he grabbed them by the pussy. He didn't he grab didn't anybody by the him. pussy, and nobody's accused him of that. <laughs> so don't even don't even start that kind of rumor, Phil. But anyway, let's get back to Todd and and Bernie. I, I think Bernie is. Can I say this? I think that he he's a kind of he is a what we call uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Passive. He's passive aggressive. Oh me, I wouldn't do anything evil in this election. I'm a good guy. And well, your people are saying this, and your people are doing that. Well, I those are people I don't have control over. So right. is Bloomberg. He's a passive. Wait a minute. Let me for, forget about. It. We're not talking about that right now, Phil. You're so changing Bernie the subject. All go up to the what I'm saying is Bernie it's is not the good idea. guy that you would think that he is. Uh, he's using uh, some pretty crappy tactics here and there to to win this election, and he's allowing them to be done in his name. And then he denies that he has anything to do with it, you know. So it's Wednesday night is the debate, right? Well, I'm going to yeah. watch that tomorrow because Bloomberg's going to be on it. I think Alex is going. Yeah, they're going to pile on Bloomberg. Well, they're going to pile on Bloomberg, and that what th what that's going to do is it's I mean, going. He's going to be black and blue. No, but he they're going to pile on him. But but mm. here's the good news: they pile on him all the attention is going to go off of all the other candidates and be focused right on him. And people are, are, are going to be paying more attention to Bloomberg than they are to anybody else. And, I, and, and if he can come out somewhat unscathed in that, in that, if he looks like he's being pounced upon, gang-banged by these people, he's going to get the pity of the voters. I believe he that he's going to come back. He better keep his answers really short. Look, he's going to come back. He's going to get angry. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Phil, Phil. Yeah. You, you got to you've we've got to put Bloomberg in this perspective. Here's a guy who went into the race by just buying ads on television. He didn't go to Iowa. He didn't go to uh, uh, for uh, New Hampshire. He didn't go to Nevada. But and we all sat around going, how does he expect to even be part of this election? You know, this part of this primary season. And the fact is, by buying all those spots, he's now in the number two or three spot. Okay, wait a minute. And that's because he bought his way into it. So don't think that he hasn't got a plan for this whole thing, you know. This is the problem. 
the mm. these these surveys that they say that he's got 19 percent of the vote uh you know who's conducting these surveys uh, i think that this they're in cahoots well, that was the, a uh, I, I can't remember who that poll who was but it was a very it was a very good yeah. poll phil it was a very good he's poll very respected poll what, the money. what are you saying debris he's got look he, <laughs> the guy's worth 61 billion dollars mm. Do we, does anybody think he couldn't buy this if he wanted it? He can. If he spends all, his, if he, if he says my pocketbook is is 100% open, well, 99% open, he definitely becomes president. If you spend 60 billion dollars, you become president. Well, he's not going to spend 60 billion. He doesn't need to spend that. He doesn't need no. to spend five billion. You know, Trump's only got something yeah. like a, maybe a billion maybe. at his disposal, yeah. okay? And he can't afford to go into his own pocket any longer because he ha doesn't have any real income. Yeah, that's, that's too bad. Trump is going to starve if, uh, if he didn't have this presidency. Trump only one hell, What did you say, Todd? I said Trump ain't starving. He's going to jail. <laughs> Then he then he gets three hots, you know, if he goes to jail. Yeah. But come on, you know, Anacott. The boy going to jail, man. He ain't going to jail. He's no, got. Let him off. The president. Billionaires let billionaires off. Yeah, and yeah. that's the thing, you know, the the billionaires are, don't want Bernie Sanders. They'll stop at nothing to stop Bernie. That's right. Yeah. Well, Bert, well, you know what's interesting, too, yeah. with Bloomberg, like the past two poll, uh, caucuses or whatever they were, none of them were really having high numbers for the Democrats. So there is an opening here, it looks like. Well, you got to remember, Bernie may have 25 percent of the vote, but the rest of the vote is going to all the other people. And as soon as yeah. some of those wash out, that middle ground is going to suddenly surge in numbers. So it's going to go somewhere, whether it goes, yeah. it goes to Bloomberg or whether it goes to Buttigieg or whatever. Do you, see, yep. do you see any Bloomberg can increase? I don't see any Democrat what? dropping out. Uh, oh, they have to drop out. Uh, uh, um, I, 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 I think we're going to see Elizabeth Warren dropping out. Yes. Uh, uh, I think Todd. Steyer will drop out. Oh, Steyer. Yeah, he's the next to go. Yes, uh, Todd. I'm sorry to interrupt, but do no disrespect, but do anybody see it going to Buttigieg seriously? Serious. I could see it going to Buttigieg. I think that he's young, it's key, mm -hmm. and he has a small area in, in in a state that he did have a lot of problems with African American individuals, and he cannot, he cannot get a what uh, a decent what? African American vote. Well. You know, yeah, I, 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 a lot of people. A lot of people say, "Well, you know, if it's between Trump and a Democrat, who are the African Americans going to vote for?" And I say, "Nobody. They're just not going to go to the polls." And what you want is you want them going to the polls. Um, but I, you know, something though. Yeah, but there are a lot of. But Bernie's got a lot of baggage, and Bernie is. A, uh, it, to begin with, I mean, to begin with, if 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 any one of the top, what the top four is it? Uh, 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 Bree, would you kill your microphone? Uh, if, if, I mean, if the top four, if the top four people, if the top four people uh, are in the race, I think there, I think three of them are seventy-eight. If I'm not mistaken, if you include Bloomberg, it's Bloomberg, yeah, yeah, Bloomberg yeah, 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 and Biden. Yeah, it's, they're all 78 years of age. That's awfully old to be running for president of the United States. Did so, we ever have a president dying in office? Oh, uh, yeah, of course. Why, Kennedy. Kennedy. <laughs> Come on. What? Oh, that's right. But not by assassination. No, I meant no by, like, there have been guys who have died in office. Uh, b b b Roosevelt. Come on. Roosevelt. Well, good it, example. Uh, uh, you go back further. What's his name? The big, the, well, sure. there, uh, there was one that got shot, and then the bullet took like two, it was five, right. ten months to kill him. Yeah. One, yeah. one month he was in, then he ate something in San Francisco. Oh, no, he was up in Alaska, and he came back, yeah. and I think he died at the St. Francis Hotel, as a matter of fact. Uh, the, uh, it, it's the or was it, no, it was a palace hotel. It was a palace hotel. Patty Arbuckle sat on him. Yeah, Patty yeah. Arbuckle yeah. sat on him. <laughs> 
But I was it uh, Lincoln shot. Huh? She yeah. Lincoln. Yeah. Lincoln. Ooh, and he's a Republican. It didn't count. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, stop. Yeah. Lincoln was a good president. I, I didn't know that Lincoln was Jewish, but he got shot in the temple. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's terrible. Hey, our I girl that, so I walked, is still running. What? Our it's girl, Telsey Gabbard, is still running. Is she still running? Yeah. I'm voting for her. And, and suing Clinton. No, really? Whatever she, whatever she yeah. wants. And what she's <laughs> using is her campaign slogan is, you can touch me by the pussy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's a tough one. She's a tough one. Yeah, she's a tough one. But um, I don't know. I don't think uh, the Democrats are having a rough go of it. Uh, and it, 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 uh, in all deference to you, Phil, to your to your love child, Donald Trump, um, uh, you know, um, this guy is so easy to beat. It's a shame the Democrats can't come up with somebody to beat him. OK, uh, they, you think he's easy to beat. Uh, I think that uh, most of the country loves the guy. Oh, yeah. Most of the country. Wait a minute, Phil. What, 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 crazy what would most of the country? Wait a minute. What would most of the country be, Phil? What's your definition of most of the country? Uh, everybody but California. No, wait a minute. What's your definition of mostly everybody? everybody? He still hasn't got 50 percent approval rating. He doesn't so he need 50 percent. Actually, he. I thought he uh, had uh, what forty nine. Right. Well, but here's here's the thing, yeah. Phil. Yeah. Here, here's the reality. Okay, so Trump. It, uh, only. Gosh, it, it, you know, I I'm political communications was my one of my main areas, and I took a lot of classes at Maxwell, which is the top school. In so then, why are you still a Democrat? But let me tell you how this works. Mm -hmm. um, Trump wins. From a number of different perspectives, I mean, we all know there, there's so many variables at, at play. But the advantage that that Bloomberg will have is that if there are more Democrats than there are Republicans that vote, so the, the if if Bloomberg can get those people out in the strategic areas where he needs, then he wins. You know, and Trump has to rely on keeping this. He has a very solid base, but. Bloomberg can get a bigger base quick if he if he really wants it. Can I ask you this, Bree? If uh, if um, they steal the uh, the uh, deal from Bernie uh, and Bernie is basically an independent running as a Democrat, so could he end up being a third party spoiler if no. they steal no. uh, his nomination? No, Bernie, Bernie will support Bloomberg, and it will. Just like he supported Hillary Clinton, you know, and uh, it, it there will be some contentiousness there, and that's what we have to watch for over the next month. We'll see. There'll be a lot of contention. Well, the problem is the problem is that, that, that what you what you have as as the biggest problem is the Democrats just fighting each other so much. I'll get to you in a second, Patrick. Fighting each other so much. That they dilute each other in the eyes of the American public, so that when it comes to election time, they go, "Well, you know, remember what they said about Bernie? Remember what they said about whoever is running?" Uh, and and they've got to be careful about that. They've got to they got to rather than fight each other, they should be fighting for their beliefs and trying to win over the American public on that instead of saying, "Oh, Biden's a jerk and the you know, Bernie's doing this to me and uh, Elizabeth Warren." Whatever. Anyway, t uh, uh, Patrick, you had your. Well, you know, it seems that I, I, what? Hey, Bree, can you mute? Patrick is getting. Yeah, uh, yeah he's having. Yeah, he, Patrick's sorry. having a hard time of it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Patrick. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've spoken with my family about the Democrats running and, and who they favor or think, you know, could. What up? Mm -hmm. Bree, your mic's still on, and it's overpowering. Your Matt mic Patrick. is still on, Bree, and it's overpowering it Patrick. Up. Yeah, go ahead, Patrick. Okay, go ahead. The biggest problem that the people that I've talked to are having is distinguishing anybody from anyone else, and it, it just seems that nobody wants to come out and the front runner and you know really on the table and say 
I'm the one that should be president, except Bloomberg. Yeah. And that, that really has to do with all the ads that we've been putting out. Yeah, his, his ads are... Family members, mm -hmm. one that they've come up with that they can really name is either Bernie or Bloomberg. And Bernie, because he was the big deal last time, and Bloomberg, because all they see on TV is Bloomberg ads. So, it, it, you know, I mean, it, I said it last week, and, and I know Scott got upset with me, but it, it's true. The Democrats have nobody that everybody is getting excited about, like Trump. Mm -hmm. And I don't see even Bloomberg, even if he can buy the election, I can't see him getting people like Bernie does, even, that could get excited behind him. It, it might be that they would vote for him, because I keep seeing all over Facebook, vote blue no matter who, which I, whatever, but... I, I don't see the excitement behind... Okay, Trump. let me ask you this, okay? Now, I am about, about as left as you can get. I mean, I'm left to the left to the left. And yet, Bernie doesn't seem like a good idea to me, and I can't figure out why. And I think it's something about Bernie that is not genuine, that I don't believe... Uh, uh, and, and he fails to make me believe in him. And I also have talked to people up in Vermont where I go to visit during the summertime who don't have nice things to say about him, and they're liberals. Jeff okay. raised his hand. Yes. Uh, 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 oh, Jeff. Yes, Jeff. And then Patrick. I think he's a problem in that his, his numbers don't make any sense at all. And he's done a very good job about focusing with with youngsters. Uh, any kind of kid who's got all kinds of problems with paying for their college and their insurance and all of these kind of things, he just kind of tells, I'll take care of it for you. Mm -hmm. But that's not reality at all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, Patrick. The other, you know, and you said there's something that makes you think that he's not genuine. I think some of it, for somebody like me sitting on the outside, mm -hmm. listening to a guy who calls himself a democratic socialist and saying that he is for the working people, yet he's a millionaire how many times over? Only that, one. That doesn't seem genuine to me either. So, I mean, I'm looking at him, and the same thing that Jeff said, the numbers aren't adding up, and reality isn't that we're going to take care of it for you. And then I'm also looking at a guy telling everybody else that you becoming a millionaire is wrong. But he owns how many houses? And, you know, and he's going to deride Bloomberg and, uh, what, Warren's a millionaire? Well, but, the, but this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying about Bernie that oh, yeah. uh, that I didn't like, and that is that Bernie, for all his saying and how you know wonderful and ethical he is, he's doing an anti-campaign against these people. He's berating these various other people and go after Biden and go Biden blah 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 and and and, and, and I don't think he's running a completely ethical campaign, even though he says he is. I think you want to talk about an ethical campaign. Elizabeth Warren is running an ethical campaign, okay? Hasn't told it once. No, wait, Sorry. Phil, Phil, that's in your opinion. I'm saying that she's ethical in that she has not attacked the other people, okay? And she hasn't started her, and her advertising doesn't contain things that say Biden's bad for the country, blah, blah, blah. I have to admit also, Bloomberg. Alex. Yes. Obershaw hasn't done that either. I, I, watched, I watched Bernie Sanders' latest um, speech. And I got to tell you, I, I, I do get a little excited by Bernie, but after he kept going on and on, I just kept thinking, oh, my gosh, this is so pie in the sky. Like everything he's suggesting, oh, we're going to get rid of uh, the borders, the Border Patrol. We're going to have health care for everybody. All uh, public schooling is going to be free. We're going to start the Green New Deal. Like 
like one of these things would be a major accomplishment for one president in one term. And he's listing like, I mean, this seriously went on for like 20 items. And I kept thinking, oh my gosh, like, okay, you lost me at the third the third one, because there's no way. Yeah, there's, no, there's no way he's going to be. A, well, the reality of him accomplishing those things is 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 uh, is not realistic. You know, I mean, uh, y you know, even Obama, who tried, could only get some form of of health care passed. Right. Bernie, who is a doesn't fit into either Republican or Democratic, but calls himself a, a Democratic Socialist. Is going to is going to find it rather hard to get any of that stuff through Congress. Yes, Jeff, and then Phil. Okay. Well, first of all, he's not a Democrat. Yeah. He's never said he's a Democrat. He's never admitted to that that he's not. He's not. Right. He's just not a Democrat. That's up, you know, and that's his own. He can decide to do that, but. Well, that's why I like that's why I like Bloomberg because he's a Democrat and then he's a Republican and then he's an independent and then he's a Republican again and then he's a Democrat. But here's the, problem. the most difficulty, the whole thing, is if a, a a Democrat becomes president and the Senate is still Republican. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very difficult to make any of these changes. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, who had his hand up, uh, Phil? This is Bernie's last stand. He's seventy-eight. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't get it now, he's not going to run when he's eighty-two. And uh, so I, I think that he is going to go independent as soon as they steal uh, the the elect the no. nomination. No. No, not going to do that. He's, 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 he's not always caucus with the Democrats, Phil. He's always caucus with the Democrats, even though he was an independent. In fact, the two independents uh, in Congress uh, both caucus with the yeah, Democrats. But they, but even though he caucus with the Democrats, the Democrats did him dirty last time, and they're going to do him dirty this time. Do you think he's going to stand around for that? This is his last shot. See, maybe Bernie, you know what Bernie Well, do you think do if Trump team? doesn't get elected, he's going to leave office? No. He's going to die. Trump. Trump leave office? No, he won't leave office. No. They he, have he, he, they're going to have to pull him he's out, put, kicking and three, screaming. Three more terms for Trump. Yeah, three more they're terms. No, he's getting Jared ready for, getting for, for, he's course. getting for the, for, the, for <laughs> Ivanka <laughs> and Jared to what run for office. Yes. Oh, my God. I, I, I want the uh, coronation. I, I think it was well. Who was it? Uh, uh, I maybe uh, was it was it Bill Maher that showed a picture of Ivanka and and Jared and said, "Here are the latest love dolls from Japan." <laughs> you know, because they looked so waxy and so made up and so stiff. You know, but, Jared. I can't stand yeah, looking at but guy. Ivanka's kind of cute. Just the name, Jabby. <laughs> Ivanka's kind of sterile looking, as far as I'm concerned. I'll vote for her. Yeah, I vote. But then again, the reason you like her is because her father would fuck her. So that's the reason why you like her. By exactly. the way, there there goes my rating for tonight on uh, on. Uh, yeah. No monetization <laughs> for you. No monetization <laughs> for me. Well, I'm up to two dollars and sixty one cents, and I'm trying uh, or thirty one hey, cents. Can and they take the money back? back? How much hmm? my lunch cost today? Hey, yeah. Can they get the money back? What? If you curse, can they take the money back? Uh, you know, maybe. Uh, maybe. Anyway. <laughs> hey, that's it. Hand up. Yeah. Uh, well, we, we haven't got time for anything, Jeff. We're, nope. We've run out of time. And it's no fill tomorrow. Really? Why? Uh, photo, club. photo club. Oh, you know, the best, you know, the one thing about, <laughs> you know, one, one thing you have to do with photo club. You can't tell anybody photo club exists. Uh, you know. Oh, that's true. Yeah. But I don't want to belong to a club that would have me as a member. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Tomorrow, Great. Photo it's, it'll be all clear tomorrow. And I, boy, we had nobody watching tonight. I don't, And more people listening. Must be some part of the country that YouTube isn't getting to or something. Debate tomorrow should be fun. Hey, listen. I can take the tour and walk around if you need it. Uh, yeah, please. Uh, we got, uh, we got, uh, we got, uh, uh, Todd. Thank you, Todd. Love having you here. Always love having you Thank here. Thank you for having me. Uh, uh, Phil, good having you here. Uh, Patrick, always a pleasure. Tony, wonderful to have you here. Jeff, 
and Ray Renati, and of course Bree out there in uh, Kuala Lumpur, ladies and gentlemen, in Malaysia. Uh, uh, everybody, what I would do is give a big wave goodbye, and then I will do the same thing back at you, okay? And then the audience will do the same thing back at you, and uh, we'll see you all, hopefully, with the exception of Phil, tomorrow night, right here. Uh, stay tuned now for our next program coming up, which is, of course, The Intersection with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, wait a minute, I've got I've to make this thing, how do I, where, where is this? Okay, oh, well, I don't know what this is. Okay, well, I'm trying to do something here, and I can't do it. What, why, what is the reason why? Well, anyway, that's it for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, there we go. Uh, that's our uh, our, our uh, group for tonight. Uh, stay tuned for Jack Bishop. He's next over most of the same station. If I can get this all together, uh, he'll be uh, here with uh, another citizen panel. I'll be back again tomorrow night. Uh, let's see here, 10 o'clock, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, be sure to tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.